I don't know about you, but lately I've noticed people seem to be driving slower on the motorways. I was looking this up online and found various forums full of people admitting that they now drive at 60 miles per hour instead of 70 miles per hour on motorways and dual carriageways in order to save fuel. I think this must have started in 2022 with the so-called fuel crisis when the price of fuel went up to record levels. In fact, I remember paying over two pounds per litre for diesel during that period. But fuel hasn't exactly become much cheaper since then, and so perhaps people are just continuing, or maybe they just fell into the habit of driving at those speeds. But does it actually save you any fuel? Today I'm in this 2023 Alpine A110, and I've been using it over the past week or so as my daily driver, and I've actually been completely surprised at how efficient it is. It uses the 1.8 four-cylinder turbocharged Renault engine and produces around 260 horsepower. However, it only weighs around 1,100 kilograms, and so it's just an amazing balance of both performance and efficiency. But will driving at 60 miles per hour versus 70 miles per hour save me fuel and therefore money? To conduct this experiment, then, I'll be driving between point A and point B twice. Point A is this Shell petrol station, and point B is this other Shell petrol station about 13 miles down the A41, which is a dual carriageway. So I'll fill up the car at point A until the nozzle clicks once, then I'll drive to point B at 70 miles per hour using cruise control, and then when we arrive at point B, we'll once again fill up the car to one click on the nozzle and see how much fuel we've used, thus being able to calculate the cost. Then what we'll do is drive all the way back to point A and restart the challenge, but then drive back to point B at 60 miles per hour, if that makes sense. And hopefully then we'll see a difference in litres used of fuel over the relatively short journey, which we can then scale to calculate for distances that might be more applicable to you. This is going to be really interesting, I think, and I've tried to keep this experiment, if you can call it that, as sterile as possible, using obviously the same car, putting in the same amount of fuel, using a day where there's not much wind, but also doing the journey in the same direction both times. Now, I guarantee lots of you watching this video are in the market for a new or used car. And if you're anything like me, I'm looking for something that can get me through the winter instead of my current Audi TT. And I think I've settled on a Porsche Cayenne. But if you've ever bought a used car before, you'll know that it can be a complete minefield. And that's why I want to talk about today's video sponsor, Car Vertical, who I think are an absolute essential in your car buying toolbox when it comes to buying a used car. So as I mentioned, I'm looking at buying a used Porsche Cayenne to get me through the winter. And there's hundreds of examples all over the internet, wherever you look. But this particular one, I've put on to Car Vertical here, and it's had quite the history. It's not been stolen or had the mileage clocked, but, it was previously written off. And what's more, I can see the photos of the damage here on Car Vertical. This car was clearly extensively damaged and obviously is not one that I want to look at any further. Car Vertical can tell you lots of other things as well, such as whether there's outstanding finance on the car you're looking at, something you've got to be much more careful about these days. But this is absolutely essential to have if you want to ensure that you're getting what you're paying for and not buying something with a history that the seller doesn't want to tell you about. So if you're thinking about putting the trigger on that car that you're looking at right now, I strongly encourage you to do a car vertical check before doing so. You can use my code now on screen, it's Joel, to get yourself a discount off your car vertical check. Thank you so much to Car Vertical for sponsoring this channel and supporting this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. Okay, so there we go. That's the 45 litre fuel tank topped up. So now we're gonna drive the 13 miles to point B. And obviously if there's 42 litres when we fill up at point B, it means we've used three litres. Now, there's about a mile to drive in a 30 and then a 40 zone until we get onto the dual carriageway. So obviously that's a slight thing I can't control, but I'll try and drive in exactly the same manner on both journeys. So what I'm gonna do is, as soon as I start the engine, I'm gonna make off and head to the dual carriageway where I will accelerate to 70 miles an hour, put it on cruise control, and then I'm gonna reset at that exact point that we hit 70, reset the economy trip on the dash and take the note of, of the recording as soon as we decelerate from 70. I'll do the same when we do the same journey from 60, if that makes any sense. It makes sense to me and I'm hoping all the calculations 
will work in the end. But the reason I'm also going to take the amount of fuel in the car is because you can never completely trust the trip computers in, in all cars. So we're essentially gonna have two data points to go off and hopefully they should correlate with each other. Right, so it looks like it's clear to go. I've got my sat nav ready. All the cameras are rolling. We're gonna start the engine, drive in normal mode in the car. So we'll start the engine and put it into drive and we're gonna go. So we'll do exactly the same thing on our second journey. So what I'll do is essentially drive very economically for this first bit. I'm gonna go left out of here, that's good, no delay. And then I'm just gonna accelerate pretty normally up to the speed limit, which is 30 miles per hour. And then I will use my cruise control to hold us at 30 miles per hour. So there's 30, so we'll just hold at 30 miles an hour a 50 zone coming up what I'm going to do just so we don't have to break behind that Range Rover in front of us is only accelerate up to 40 for this bit so we'll wait exactly until the 50 mile an hour sign and accelerate on the cruise control to 40 miles per hour hopefully now we can hold that speed for the 0.6 miles until we get to the A41 which is the two lane dual carriageway and then it will be about 12 miles on there until the Shell petrol station. Hope this is all making sense. I've tried to plan this so that it is as reliable and accurate as possible with as small amount of variables as I could possibly have, but we'll see how it goes nonetheless. Okay, so over this drain cover, I'm gonna hit zero on the cruise control, let the car decelerate. I'm just gonna indicate right now, having to brake to a stop, so we'll remember that for our second journey. I'm going to stop here for a few seconds. About five seconds or so we've been stopped. And again, just a gentle acceleration now onto the A41 where I'm going to reset the MPG thing you can see on the screen now. So what I'm going to do is accelerate using the cruise control up to 70 miles an hour. No scratch that, it's a bit of a funny cruise control. So I'm just going to accelerate to reach 70 miles per hour by the start of that sign there. There's 70, and now I'm going to reset the MPG. There we go. Right, test has officially started. 70 miles an hour, 11 miles to go. It's Saturday at 2 in the afternoon, so it's very quiet. There's actually no wind today, it's about a two or three knot wind or calm winds. So this is probably as good as it's gonna get, not raining either. And the temperature outside is 11 Celsius. So pretty average conditions, let's say. The interesting thing about this stretch of road as well is it's quite a, a hilly stretch. There's a few ups and a few downs. So I think it will give us a good representative sample of just the roads in Britain really because they are a little bit all over the place. So we've just gone up a hill there and with eight and a half miles to go we've averaged 35 miles per gallon at 70 miles per hour so far. Another thing to consider of course between driving at 60 and 70 miles per hour is the time that it will take you to get to your destination. For example if you have to cover 140 miles and you're doing 70 miles per hour very easy it's going to take you two hours but at just 10 miles an hour less at 60 miles per hour that same journey would actually take you two hours and 20 minutes so not an insignificant difference especially you know if you do value your time over long distances driving at 60 will make quite a big change to your journey time so we're eight miles into the first leg of this experiment and we've not had to come off cruise control once which is really good you often get it, unfortunately, where I would go into lane two to pass a vehicle doing 65 miles per hour, and as soon as you come to pass them, they speed up, and it just causes this situation where I'm not gonna go above 70, they're speeding up, people come up behind you, get really annoyed. I'm really hoping that doesn't happen, but with just three miles to go, it's fairly clear ahead of me, we might just get away with this. So what we're going to do is as soon as I click this zero button here, or the O, on the steering wheel, that'll dis disengage cruise control, we'll begin our deceleration into the petrol station, at which point we're gonna take note closely 
of that MPG figure on the rev counter. We've got a nice little downhill here to help us out at the last point. So at this dash three sign, I'm gonna hit zero. We'll do for the same on the second leg. There it is, I've come off it now. 41.5 miles per gallon, I think that said. Little signal here to come off and just try and again, drive gently up to the pump where we can fill up the car and get an accurate reading of how much fuel the car has used. But, okay, there we go. And I'm gonna stop here, pop the engine off. And that's the end of our 70 mile per hour experiment. So as I said, I'm gonna fill up the car here now fill it up to one click, see how many litres go in, give us an indication of what's left in the tank and therefore how much we've used. Then I'm gonna zip back off camera now to point A, repeat the same thing at 60 miles per hour. It's quite funny really, I just ran into a problem that I hadn't even thought of which is when I filled the car up, all it took until the first click was 1.23 litres. And at these petrol pumps, the minimum delivery is two litres. So I had to go many, many clicks beyond to try and get it above two litres. So what I'm gonna do now is drive quite inefficiently back to point A, so that when I fill it up, I can just fill it up to one click, so to speak. Hopefully that makes sense, but I hadn't really thought of that. And also when we come back, presumably we'll have used even less fuel at, at 60 miles an hour. So <laughs> we'll have to work something out again. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's the thing with these experiments. You can't think of absolutely everything. Okay, so I've just filled the car up to one click again, and now it's time to repeat the journey, but at 60 miles per hour this time. So we're gonna repeat everything as we did before, try and make it as fair as possible. And it's gonna be really interesting to see the results. I'm hoping also that the traffic is not too dissimilar. It seems to be getting a little bit busier now, but we'll try, like I say, to just keep everything as it was before. So we're gonna start the engine. We're in normal mode. Unfortunately, the car thinks it's night time, so the screen has gone quite dim. Hopefully, you'll still be able to make it out. We'll find out. But anyway, we better put it in drive and get going. So, here we go. So, as with the thought, we're going to pull out of here, slowly accelerate up to 30 miles per hour, which is the current speed limit. And then once we reach the 50 signs, I'm just going to go up to 40 because that's what we did before. This time we could do 50, but obviously don't want to make it any different. Okay, up to 40 miles an hour now at the 50 sign. This is great, this is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is how dim the screens are now. There's one slight annoyance with this car is that it thinks it's dark and I can't make them any lighter, or at least I can't find a way to do so. Some of you might be thinking as well, you know you can get better fuel economy if you don't use cruise control, and that's totally true. Although here we're not trying to just get the best fuel economy, we're trying to compare the difference between two data sets. And the great thing about cruise control is it doesn't interpret the road ahead, or at least this one doesn't. It doesn't discriminate against anything else. All it wants to do is keep you at that speed. There's the drain cover. We're gonna press the zero there to start decelerating. We're gonna indicate right. We did have to hold here for about five seconds. So I'll try and do the same thing. Yeah, we've got a car coming so we can hold for five seconds. And now I'm gonna go actually because that was about the same amount of time. And look, the screens have come brighter again. Same thing, except we're just gonna go up to 60 miles per hour this time. And I reached 70 by where that barrier starts. So I'm gonna try and reach 60 by the same point. And then what we're gonna do is hold the button here and reset the trip. So, 60 miles per hour, there it is. And hold. There we go. <laughs> 60 miles an hour, 12 miles, will take 12 minutes. What do you reckon? Comment below what you think it's gonna be. If it was 41.5 or it was thereabouts at 70 miles per hour, what will it be at 60? 
I'm gonna guess 44.2. Let me know what you think. I might just add at this point as well, I'm in no way encouraging anyone to drive deliberately under the speed limit. I would potentially be of the opinion that that's not a great idea. If the conditions allow you to do so, I think you should be driving at the speed limit. It's actually more considerate to other road users, potentially van drivers, lorry drivers that are limited to lower speeds. It causes them more problems when you have cars matching their speed. You know, the last thing lorry drivers want is to be anywhere near smaller vehicles. So I would potentially argue it's not advisable to drive at 60 miles per hour, but I'm not recommending either way. This is purely for science, just to see what the difference is in fuel economy and cost. I think it would actually be even more interesting to do an experiment where I drove at 80 miles per hour to see what the difference between that and 70 was, because I think, to be honest, for most people that would be a more useful experiment. But obviously, plastering myself, deliberately breaking the speed limit all over YouTube would be a very bad idea. But for science at least, I think that would be quite an interesting thing to do, because I've heard that it can use as much as 30% more fuel doing 80 miles per hour than doing 70, and I can believe that. The other thing to, to caveat and to say is that obviously all cars are different. Whether you have a big diesel car, a tiny little city car, they're all gonna have different efficient speeds. A bit like aircraft have the most efficient gliding speeds, it's always different based on the weight of the car, the engine size, number of variables. So it's always going to change based on what you're driving and also weather conditions and road conditions are completely different every single day. So this can only really give you so much of an indication. I have to say driving at 60 miles per hour on a fairly empty 70 mile per hour road does feel like I'm causing a bit of an obstruction. I would also estimate that actually there's a number of things you can do other than driving at slower speeds that would save you more fuel, such as just anticipating the road ahead. I see so many drivers braking unnecessarily, following the car too close in front and therefore having to slow down and accelerate more than they really ever should. If you learn how to handle those things better and to just drive better, I would argue probably save you more fuel than driving under the speed limit but that's just a hypothesis I cannot really prove that okay so we're exactly halfway into this now 5.8 miles completed 5.7 to go we're currently cruising along at 42.5 miles per gallon as our average since we started three and a half miles to go then and if you're still watching at this point in the video I'd really kindly ask you to subscribe if you're one of my 75% of regular viewers that have not done so already, lots of interesting content coming up and I don't want you to miss out. I'd love you to comment below if you are a driver that drives slower to save fuel and tell me what your experience has been like a bit and whether you think it's worthwhile. Okay, here we are then. We're coming to the hill. You can see the shell ahead. And remember, we've got that sign with the three dashes on it. That's where we're gonna begin our deceleration from 60 miles per hour have a look at this gauge and I'm a bit wrong actually it's a lot higher than I thought it was going to be let's see what it gets to by the time we have to slow down here comes the sign we're going to press the zero on the steering wheel to deactivate the cruise control start indicating left there it is and I've got 46.2 as I press the button 46.2 miles per gallon average that is quite a big increase isn't it Ooh, 46 point something it said there. Well, what I'm gonna do is fill the car up, get all my calculations written down, go through the footage and make sure I'm quoting the right numbers. And then we're gonna work out the difference and how much that would cost over longer durations as well if we were to use this data set. Very interesting. Well, here we are then back at home where we started just a few hours ago next to my Audi TT, which is usually my daily driver. I'm not normally driving around in this lovely Alpine. However, I think that test went really well. I'm very pleased with that actually. It went as well as I could have planned for. The traffic was pretty good. We were able to stay on cruise control for the entire duration, that 12 miles on the dual carriageway. 
and each drive from point A to point B was pretty much identical. There was almost nothing different between them. And so I've been doing some calculations and here we have on my notepad what I have discovered. So let's first start with that miles per gallon figure on the trip computer. So when we did our 70 miles per hour run, the miles per gallon figure on the trip computer was 41.5 as an average from driving at 70 miles an hour for 12 miles from that point where we reached 70 to that sign where we switched the cruise control off and took our reading. Now compare that to when we did the 12 miles at 60 miles per hour, we averaged 46.2 miles per gallon, according to the trip computer that is. So that is a difference between them and I'm just gonna round them up to the nearest whole number. It was 11.13% difference, but let's call it 11%. And luckily the clicks on the fuel pump do correlate with my data, slightly different indicative of around a 12 and a half percent change but the fuel used in litres on the 70 mile, mile per hour run was 1.23 litres and the fuel used on the 60 mile per hour run was 1.09 litres. As a whole, we're around 11, 12% increase in fuel driving at 70 miles per hour versus driving at 60 miles per hour. Am I surprised by that? I suppose I'm not really, but in, in real terms, it is a quite a big difference. When I saw that 41.5 compared to the 46.2, I did think that was quite a big difference but what does that mean in terms of cost so going off the figures i got from the fuel pumps uh, both fuel phillips uh, i did were priced at one pound 55.9 a litre so let's call it one pound 56 a litre therefore the fill up uh, from driving at 70 miles per hour for 12 miles cost me one pound and 91 pence and the fill up from driving 12 miles at 60 miles per hour cost me one pound and 70 pence so there's a 21 pence different there, but that's only 12 miles. So if we imagined it was a 120 mile journey, maybe your commute is 60 miles each way, or you're going to visit some family over the holiday period this year, you're gonna be looking at 19 pounds 10 driving at 70 and 17 pounds driving at 60 miles per hour. And that's for a 120 mile journey. Of course, all of these figures are just based on this car on that very controlled environment and that drive that I did. When your journeys get longer, obviously there's gonna be a bunch of more variables that can happen to your journey to affect your consumption figures, etc. But you know, this gives you a nice idea, I think. I think what's more interesting, is if we multiply that 120 mile figure by 100, that gives us 12,000 miles. And that is a pretty close average actually to what most people in the UK do on the road each year, around 12,000 miles. And that would come out uh, a saving of 210 pounds if you were to drive at 60 versus 70 miles per hour. So I'm sure you can work the figures out, but that's 1,910 pounds at 70 miles an hour on fuel and 1,700 pounds at 60 miles per hour. So 210 pounds over an entire year if you were to do 12,000 miles and drive at 60 miles per hour instead of 70. So there we go. Uh, my opinion on it is don't drive at 60 miles an hour do 70 if you can i don't think that cost saving is enough to justify the reduction in speed i'd love to hear your opinions though on what you think and also when you factor in the time added to your journeys uh, i should actually do the calculation for how much time that would waste if you were doing 12,000 miles. Bear with me, I'm going to give you this number. So say you're choosing to save your £210 a year by driving at 60 instead of 70. How much time are you going to be adding to your drives by doing that? So assuming again, you're going to be driving at either 60 or 70 miles an hour for the entire 12,000 miles that you do in a year. This is very interesting. So the 12 mile journey we just completed, of course, at 60 miles per hour, that's going to take you 12 minutes because 60 miles per hour is one mile per minute. At 70 miles an hour, it's going to take you only 10 minutes and 17 seconds. So actually quite a big difference, a couple of minutes. If that's a 120 mile journey, of course, again, 120 minutes, which is two hours. So it will take you two hours at 60 miles an hour. At 70, it will take you one hour and 41 minutes. So again, over a two hour trip at 60, you're actually going to save almost 20 minutes by driving at 70 miles an hour but where it gets really interesting is over the whole year so over the whole year 12,000 miles you're completing in your car at 60 miles per hour 
It's going to take you 200 hours to do that or 8.3 days. If you drive at 70 miles an hour, though, it's only going to take you 169.5 hours or almost exactly seven days. So by driving, <laughs> it's crazy, really, but by driving at 60 miles an hour over a whole year instead of 70 miles per hour, you're going to take an extra 1.3 days of your life. So a whole day and six hours to save 210 pounds. So when you put it that way, most people I think with a day and a bit of work could probably make that 210 pounds. So it's negligible basically is the results of this test. Driving at 60 saves you a negligible amount of money because the amount of time that you add to your journey by doing so, if you had that time to earn more money, you could probably pay for the extra fuel. So there we go. There's two ways of looking at it really. One, it's a complete waste of time to drive at 60, or two, you can do it basically for no extra cost and have a slightly more relaxing drive of it. Although I have to say from driving at 60, it felt more dangerous than it did safe. Let's put it that way. I hope you all understand uh, how we've got to all these figures. Please do correct me if I've got anything wrong uh, down below. I'll try and correct things during the edit if I've got anything uh, really badly wrong. But roughly, I think we're about we're about there with these figures. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. And if you're still watching by now and have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And I hope I've earned a subscription from you. Thank you all so much. I wish you well, and I'll see you very, very soon.